We did a study looking at how countries, based on their understanding on why and how forests are changing, are planning Red Plus interventions. So what they should actually do to preserve forests, to increase the carbon stocks in forests, to increase forest area, to reduce the pressure on the, on the forests. Countries are asked to develop national strategies. They are asked to also look into drivers of forest change, so what's behind um, yeah, deforestation, but also reforestation. And so countries have developed strategy documents, readiness plans, proposals on how they were wanted to do that. And in fact, there's quite a number of countries who have done that already. In this study, we looked at 43, with varying levels of prog progress in that direction. Some countries are more advanced than others, some have better data than others, better capacity than others, so there was a bit of a variability in terms of the quality of the data. But it was good enough to make a synthesis, a first synthesis, across these 43 countries. So what are countries having in mind when it comes to Red Plus? And our basic assumption was always, well, if you want to do something about forest loss, for example, you need to understand why forests are being lost. Because if you know the cause, you can do something about it. And so this kind of relationship, what's causing the forest change and what can you do about it in terms of then planning concrete interventions on Red Plus, that was our logical chain. And we tried to you know, analyze that in that context. And we found, first of all, that, well, quite a number of countries don't understand their causes very well or their drivers, uh, but still plan interventions. And most of these inter interventions are very forest related. You know, Red Plus is commonly perceived as a forest related mechanism, it's about preserving forests and so on. Uh, and so what countries are proposing, okay, let's, you know, manage our forests better, let's conserve them, let's uh, plant more forests, uh, let's sustainably manage them. And those are the common interventions, you, plans you find in that thing. Well, we have also some countries who have done a very detailed analysis. Okay, this is why our forests are changing. And those are our strategies from that understanding on how to do that. And that's much more driver intervention linkages. And so in these countries, what you're finding that agriculture is the largest driver of forest change is that, of course, the interventions that are being proposed are very much agriculture related. So you need to change the way you do agriculture to actually reduce the pressure on the forest. So we find a lot related to land intensification, uh, integrated land use planning, um, uh, fire management, uh, and, and all of these kind of things uh, that are actually mostly happen outside the forest to preserve the forest. Right? And so that's why we find quite an interesting divide between countries who have done these driver analysis well and have taken on board and the other ones because the interventions look quite different. different. That's the, one of the interesting findings of that study and uh, well, a couple of implications of that. Well, first of all, countries are encouraged to understand and address drivers and that, that idea is further encouraged by that study, uh, in particular countries who haven't done so. And that usually requires some investments in better data and better understanding. Um, we also, it's also now starting to realize more than before is that agriculture is a key part of Red Plus in that sense. And so this kind of linkages between agriculture and Red Plus are becoming even more prominent now when it comes to you know, thinking about concrete strategies and what, what to do. And that's really inherent in particular in countries which have a lot of agriculture driven deforestation. The other implications of the study is that if you want to think about monitoring Red Plus, not only monitoring forest change and monitoring the drivers of forest change, but also uh, monitoring the interventions, which may be outside the forests, uh, that you actually may have to do a lot of monitoring outside forests for Red Plus and not only the forest itself if you want to track these interventions. Direct means, in a sense, the activity, the concrete activity that has, that has changed the forest. For example, if a forest is replaced by agriculture, then agriculture is considered the direct driver or there's a mining that's opening up uh, or there's an infrastructure or a hydrological dam or a, a road or something that's been built and that changes the forest, that's the direct driver. And the advantage of looking at direct drivers, you can more easily link, okay, this forest change is really linked to agriculture expansion. And you can actually, if you do, like, for example, satellite data analysis, you can see, okay, I see the forest disappearing 
and I see that agricultural fields are coming up. So you can directly see what, why a piece of land is converted. The underlying causes, as the other one, is more like what's really behind. I mean, agriculture expansion happens for a reason. You know, it's maybe there's more demand for land because of population growth, because of economic demands, international market demands, and these kind of things. Uh, so there's an underlying cause that's, that's, that is happening. Um, the, the issue is that it's often not so easy to link these underlying causes to specific changes, even sometimes on the national side. If there's international demand increasing for timber, for example, you do see an impact on the forest, but sometimes it's very hard to link that um, yeah, with, with forest changes in a specific region if you want to make decisions about, okay, we let's decrease the pressure on the forests here, you know, it's, it's, it's something that happens very inter internationally. Countries have a hard time dealing with in international drivers. It's a bit of a different thing, although the underlying causes are quite important in understanding. So what's really behind it? Is it demand in the Western world, in China, for meat, for timber, for other things that is driving the deforestation, right? So these links are quite important to understand what are part of the solution. So do we need to change behavior somewhere else, like in Europe, to, to preserve forests in Indonesia? Right? This, this, that's why under, understanding underlying drivers is really important. From a monitoring point of view, it's much easier to monitor direct drivers. And so that's why we have usually much better data linking deforestation to direct drivers than linking deforestation to underlying drivers. That's often, this relationship is often not so easy established because underlying causes are often complex and yeah, very, very rarely linked to a very specific um, piece of deforestation. Well, it does, it does say that countries are still really starting to understand what it actually means to do these things. That it's not just about forests, it's about forests and agriculture, it's about, you know, policy change. It's about transformational change of maybe agricultural pol policies to reduce the pressure on, on the forests. And, you know, it's getting out of this corner being a very forest-related mechanism into a kind of a multi-sector perspective that is actually needed to address it. So that's definitely that point, and that's not a point that we exclusively make in that study. I mean, a lot of C4 research, um, the, for example, the research of Maria Brockhaus and others have really shown that, that you know, it requires this fundamental policy change to actually do the important, you know, create important incentives that need to be created. And that just takes time. It's just not something that, you know, comes overnight. The solutions are not as quick as people would have thought. Uh, and so, yeah, it, it, you know, countries, it just takes longer time. If they really want to address it in the comprehensive way, it would need to be addressed. Um, so having said that, that plus will be slower than expected. Um, it's still, quite a vital mechanism under the UNFCCC negotiations. That is, it has a strong, it has a strong standing there. It, it, uh, negotiations are going really well. Some of the big donors of Red Plus, such as Norway, Germany, they have made longer term commitments to 2020 and stuff like that. So, I mean, it is, the fact that there is more time to actually address some of the fundamental things is, is a good, good thing, but overall the process is moving slower and but I mean, at the end, somebody needs to realize that, you know, there is, it's not just a force mechanism, it's much bigger than that.